Hello, anybody who's watching this, welcome to Unbiased History, Byzantium 2, Justinian the Great. Um, I think this is like the longest video in the Byzantium series so far. So, hopefully I'll be fine during it. Also, he just streamed, and I think it's going to be recommended, but whatever. He just streamed the Mahati himself uh, for six hours, and I hope nobody wants me to watch that. Nobody wants me to react to the six-hour-long stream about Byzantium history from memory. I think that's the name of the stream. Something like that. I, unless I get paid, I can try to suffer through it. But only for money. I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to help out the channel, there's a national link in the description below. You can also just like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want. And let's begin. Oh my god. That's a start. Ah yes, Justinian the Great. Here we go. So Justin had just died, Justinian made emperor, and the barbarians invaded the east, right? Oh, so fine. before all that, Kavad had counseled with his lord Satan to help him out, and that oh. he did. Khosrau oh, asked for Justinian's rule to be cursed beyond any emperors before. Both knew his potential and were dead set on ruining Christian Rome's resurrection at any cost. As a starter, he conjured a devastating earthquake that ruined Antioch and wrecked its once strong walls. Taking advantage, Kavad raided deep into Syria, capturing 400 nuns and live sacrificing them to their dark deities. You Damn. think it's bullshit? Look it up. After this barbaric act, Justinian split the Eastern Legions in two armies. I don't care if it's bullshit, if it works within your narrative. I'm fine with that. The Armenian one under a general named Sittas. And so I can remember everything one, anyway. The only Belisarius. Named Magister mm -hmm. Militum, he was assigned a new legal assistant, Procopius, a bitter, hate-filled secularist pleb that hated Justinian. And while he would write mostly true history about his reign, he would also write another version, filled with lies, slanders, and the old resentment all petty men have towards their betters. As for oh, the Sassanids, Escavad tried blackmailing the Romans with the lives of border civilians while gathering a 50,000 strong horde to forever destroy Dara, Belisarius stood nearby with less than half that. For hundreds of years, Roman generals had been cultivating a strong cavalry force, the Bucellari, and under Belisarius, they became wow. heavily armed and trained Romans. Well, wow. half of them. The other half were Huns. You heard it right, for Belisarius, just like Aetius, was yet another Roman who commanded the fear of these savages for Rome's benefit. As the okay, Sassanids they changed. and sent smug, insulting They've letters, changed. Belisarius hanged them to his banner for his soldiers to laugh at. The barbarians then charged, but Belisarius had digged huge trenches to cripple the Sassanid cavalry, had his Huns surging from behind and flanked them. Belisarius slaughtered his fair share and sent the remains fleeing away. Sittas had won his own victory in the north, which also infuriated Kavad, he sent 20,000 cavalry to rush in and sack the vulnerable Antioch. Also, I want to know, uh, the, the fourth chapter in Byzantium is called The Final War. Is that the end for Byzantium videos, or is it... I guess I'll get to it soon enough, but I just kind of want to know in advance a little bit. Is that the end for Byzantium entirely, or is it just end for a Sassanid because it's a the Roman Sassanid war, the final war? Belisarius and his Bucellari intercepted them in time, but here's the thing. But don't Belisarius spoil anything. one of those great generals that were loved by his soldiers, but deeply, deeply envied by his officers and sub-commanders. So out of nowhere, his pleb officers attacked without orders, got crushed by the Sassanids, and Belisarius worked his magic to prevent a slaughter. Such would become the standard. Thankfully, Kavad had died by then, so the Sassanids oh. pissed off. Belisarius had returned to the capital, and Justinian prepared to send Khosrau, now the Sassanid king, east to hopefully cause a civil war. And yeah, he did, but he won it, seized power, and sued for peace while he was weak. But there's more. After growing up together with okay. Justinian and Justin swimming in Anastasius' gold, Khosrau devised that the best way to cripple the Romans was to cripple their economy. Khosrau thus demanded 11,000 pounds of shiny yellow rock for a green to a piece, but not just any piece, an Damn. eternal piece. 
Justinian agreed on the condition the gold would pay for defenses against the Huns. The Sassanids were really their bitch. Now here's a tough question. How long will this eternal peace last, who yeah. will break it, and for what reason? Here are your options. Speaking of Justinian, I want to ch last, I check them out. It and for what reason? Here are your Eight weeks, Sassanids destroyed Dara. Thousand years, Romans, preemptive strike. Is that how you spell preemptive? Preemptive? Okay. Uh, Ten years, Sassanids kill innocents. 43 minutes, Sassanids pillage. Oh, I, I feel like it's A or C. It could be B. But I don't trust. Assassins made me not trust them with their past actions, so I don't think thousand years will be a thing. Pretty three minutes, I think it's way too little, but it could be hilarious in in context. Whatever. Okay, uh, I'll choose. Actually, it might not happen. I just and I'm wasting time on this. Uh. Let's go eight Your weeks. Actions. Speaking of Justinian, he by now held such knowledge of the Christian. Wait, Dara has walls. So, pro pro hopefully not. C. Let's go with C. Bend the barbarians to his whim, much like Belisarius of the Huns, using said skill to make one of Theodoric's officers, Mundo, now Mundus, serve him by slaughtering Slavs and Bulgars in the Balkans. Later, recalling okay. him to replace Belisarius in the east. Justinian indeed began converting and subduing many bordering barbarians, Huns, Slavs, those desert tribes in the southeast, even Goths, Theodoric's own daughter and queen of the Ostrogoths, that is, Amala Swinfa, over which Justinian held Another such sway he convinced her to raise yeah. her son like a Roman. But none such subservient barbarian quite compared to Hilderic, whom he didn't even have to personally convert and was very much dominant over. So much so, rumor was Hilderic planned to give Africa to Justinian after his death, but being ruled by civilized non-heretics was too much for the Vandals to take. So they usurped and imprisoned Hilderic, now replaced by Gallimer, who refused all of Justinian's demands to restore Hilderic, or even send him to Constantinople. Speaking of Constantinople... Uh... To understand what's to come, you must understand Justinian's reforming tendencies. Not only did he okay. purge corruption and injustices wherever possible, but to forever making doing so simple, he assembled the best jurists the empire had to offer, led by the greatest of them, Tribonian. Tasked with compiling every law, edict and custom in the empire into a single civic code. Encoding all laws from as far as the time of Constantine, the Tetrarchy, and further back, they had done it. A single, unified, detailed account of every law in the Empire for all to obey. The Corpus Iuris Civilis, the body of civil law, forevermore the basis of most legal systems. This Justinianic code, as it came to be known, wrestled many Jimmies. Mostly heretical, pagan, secular, apostate, and unbaptized Jimmies. Because it also focused on religious orthodoxy, you see. Justinian persecuted okay. all degenerates that didn't abide by his new law code, including closing the pagan academy in Athens to eternal secularist butthurt forcing all teachers of history, morals, and philosophy to do so through a Christian lens to maximize the veracity of their teachings. And the revised taxation system stipulated in the code was enforced by Justinian's new finance minister, John the Cappadocian. His genius coming from that, once faced with rich tax evaders, he just tortured them until they gave their share. Now, oh, I was looking at the guy... He seems to have one leg, but I thought maybe he's just drawn sideways, who cares? But no, nope, I guess he did lies, have only one leg. He was corrupt and all, but who would ever pay attention to such a biased tunny of history anyway? This all combined with Justinian demanding strict court etiquette for both him and his lady, together with Justinian's continuous support for the blue faction earned him enemies all over. Unfortunately, since the Blues won all the time, many green fans shifted sides over the years, eventually making both sides just a bunch of violence-prone plebs. After one of the many pleb fights, Justinian oh, yeah. ordered the leaders to be executed. Like, if one side always wins, I don't understand why would you root for the other one, ever. And as they were hanged, two executions were botched, one for a green and a blue, both taking refuge in a church. After that in the Hippodrome, the angry plebs started demanding them to be pardoned. Justinian ignored the plebs as he should, but they just got angrier. So long the greens had gone in a losing streak, their entire lives that is, that they started shouting that which they desired most. 
Nika, Nika, victory, victory. victory. Soon the entire Hippodrome began shouting Nika at Justinian. But in truth, all he could hear was something like The yeah. insufferable chanting soon made Justinian start negotiating, but nope. The plebs were already invading prisons, liberating the inmates, then setting fire to it. They set fire to everything, really. Hospitals, schools, houses, apartments, the imperial palace, and proving plebs shall forever be below this thing, the baths of Z It's kind of... Zippus. Okay. Uh, it's kind of the same thing now, right? Where... Like football fans or some other fans, when their team loses, they just get railed up, rallied up. They don't get railed uh, unless they want to, but you know what I mean. They just get angry for no reason. I don't know our team lost. That means we can go to the pub and beat up some people i don't know Built by septimius severus and decorated by constantine himself with statues from all over the empire of greco-roman heroes was set ablaze and completely destroyed the great church once built by constantius ii then theodosius ii was also burned and destroyed along with most of the center of constantinople Furious and saddened, Justinian asked the plebs what they wanted to stop, and they said the resignation of both John the Cappadocian and Tribonian. Now, plebs didn't know how to read, much less who the tax and legal ministers were. And sure enough, Justinian mm. soon found out many senators were feeding information, guiding and directing the writers. So he ordered them all to leave. Justinian did it is kind of really specific instead of just... If it started with games, I feel like they would want... I don't know, equality in games, which I think would be much more interesting to watch to... So you wouldn't know who would win, instead of blue one again, Jesus Christ, or whatever. <clears throat> but, uh... I feel like if, if they're gonna ask resignation, it would be just Emperor's resignation, not like two specific people. They pretended to fire John and Tribonian, but as he predicted, the plebs didn't care. By now, the plebs wanted a new emperor, so they dragged the nearest relative of Anastasius, that ironically sense. enough, that they could get, his nephew Hypatius. Taken into the Hippodrome, acclaimed emperor by the plebs of a golden chain and surrounded by treacherous senators gearing him up, he started to kind of ride this wave. At this sight, many bureaucrats urged Justinian to leave, to flee the city and go into hiding. But that's when Theodora, now a true Roman emperor, spoke her mind, and she was all like, Oh, monopion thavma. Pion onoma epimise, o kalos xenos. Imi Theodora, i fili du Vizandio. That is, I would rather die an empress than live as a pleb. And Justinian oh. wholeheartedly agreed. And so he summoned the two generals that were around waiting redeployment Mundus and Belisarius, plus one of his bureaucrats, Narses. For Narses, he gave the gold to go bribe off the cheap green and blue leaders. As for Belisarius, he gave him reinforcements. And make a guess what he asked him to do. <laughs> Of All the right. 50,000 rioting plebs present, Belisarius slaughtered 30,000 of them. For crushing the riot, he was acclaimed as Belisarius Plebicus. But surely enough, the pleb Procopius did not allow that to be recorded. Bringing Hypatius and the conspirators to Justinian, he had them all either executed, exiled, or their property confiscated. John and Tribonian were reinstated, and Justinian, now devoid of any popular political opposition, set forth to rebuild Constantinople and the Empire to match his eternal dream. The usurpation in Africa never left his mind, and if the Vandals so wanted war with Rome, he would make it the first step of his reconquest. Now, many thought retaking Africa was impossible given how Leo failed with a hundred thousand men and Majoria never even got to leave the port. But Justinian knew he had Belisarius. And yeah, Belisarius was the sent west with just 15,000 men, part of them his Bucellari, starting off with two drunk Huns killing a soldier and him executing them. 
while the Vandals were dealing with two revolts, one in Libya, which allowed Belisarius to resupply, and another in Sardinia, which dragged the Vandal fleet to fight it. Justinian persuaded Amala Swinfa to let Belisarius use the Sicilian ports, and then he just straight up landed beside Carthage. Speaking with the once Roman citizens, Belisarius forced his mercenaries to behave as liberators and pay for everything they took. Learning of this, Gallimer killed Hilderic and marched to fight Belisarius with 25,000 barbarians. For he had a plan, a plan to let Belisarius pass through the valley near Carthage's Mountains of Salt and fight him salt. between I was with his brother's that. army. But Belisarius has sent his Bucellari to scout though, and them alone found and crushed the Vandal trap, killing Gallimer's brother who, once charging in thinking his plan was working, found his brother's corpse and lamented the loss of this monstrous, vile barbarian, said that the world was now a better place. Then Belisarius showed up, destroyed his army, and Gallimar fled. As Belisarius okay. took Carthage, Gallimar raised a new army with his other brother back from Sardinia. Sieging Carthage and cutting its water, he tried to get the Huns the to change sides, which just damn wasn't it. going to happen with Belisarius around. Despite outnumbered again, Belisarius charged outside of Carthage and crashed into the Vandals several times, killing Gallimar's other brother and making the world but... an even better place. Belisarius then liberated Hippo, and while far too late to save Did the guy Palsy, run away? he got in just in time to retake all of the treasures the Vandals had taken from Rome, which itself paid for the whole campaign. Gallimer had prepared a feast in the event of his certain victory, which Belisarius had for himself as he sat on the Vandal throne. Gallimer was eventually found and captured, the last remnants of Vandal resistance yeah, yeah. crushed, Sardinia and Corsica reconquered and all North African cities retaken. A Roman administration was put back in charge, the freed Romans cheered for their liberators and Africa was again a province of the Roman Empire. And let's not forget. So... Then around the kind of professional, then I lost power and fled, then I was confused in the Three quarters for the system now, and then I was promising I was fled. The domain from God. Justinian had come one step closer to his dream. So John is never coming back because there. of Vandalicus to have a mortal legacy. Justinian let him choose to either stay and govern Africa or return home, and he chose the latter. For such a magnificent Roman victory, Justinian rewarded Belisarius with the right of all victorious Romans. The first triumph in ages. To prove his humility, Belisarius marched his triumph on foot, dragging the imprisoned Gallimer and all the wealth retaken from Africa. Mm. At Justinian's side, Gallimer quoted some gibberish and was told to shut his yeah, I'll, I'll go back. Vandals completely destroyed as a horde and identity, all wealth and treasure stolen from Vandal's sack of Rome returned to the Empire. from Africa. Okay. At Justinian's side, Gallimer quoted some gibberish and was told to shut his barbarian mouth. Justinian had not been idle during it all, using Anastasius' gold to rebuild Constantinople better and grander than ever before. But his okay. greatest project was the reconstruction of the city's great Walsh. church. He no. gave the builders all the Walsh money they needed, ordering the greatest church of all time built as fast as possible. In only five years, he got his wish, with the construction of the greatest church in history, the Shrine of the Holy Wisdom of God, shortened to Holy Wisdom, in Greek, Hagia Sophia. Entering the church for the first time, I was waiting for it to say Vatican because I apparently don't know what it is. I have outdone you. Just ask Titus. While Justinian was busy building, his it's sister little, Vigilantia the Younger was busy breeding, giving the emperor two nephews, Justin and Marcellus, plus Projector, who due to being beautiful and the emperor's niece was a magnet for usurpers empire-wide. But now history mm -hmm. focuses on Italy, as is so often used to, with the Goths growing to despise Roman-friendly Amalasuinfa taking her son to be raised a proper bloodthirsty barbarian. So much so, he died a young man. Now rumors were abound that Amala okay. Swinfa planned to give Italy to Justinian, and even when she appealed to her cousin Fiodo had for help, he betrayed, killed, and usurped her. 
disrupted one of the once Romans under Gothic rule, Liberius to defect back to the empire, and inform Justinian what happened. All the emperor had to do was look at Belisarius, and he knew what to do. For too long the Roman Empire had been robbed of its home, of its birthplace. With the same skill it had conquered the world, the horrors of the 5th century would be overturned. And so, Justinian ordered Belisarius to retake Rome for its empire. With only a little more than 7,000 men, Belisarius sailed through the west and seized almost all of southern Italy, while Mundus was sent mm -hmm. to reconquer Dalmatia. The Goths did push them back, but he re-retook it at a cost of his life, with reinforcements oh. securing it. The reconquest of Italy was going so fast, Fiodo had almost just gave it all up for peace. But then the mercenaries in Africa revolted, killing his momentum and forcing Belisarius to oh, deal with it. Justinian soon replaced him in the task with his cousin and heir, Germanus, who crushed the rebellion, letting Belisarius to go back to Italy. And now on his way lay Naples, almost impossible to siege given how he had spread out his forces to secure the south. But as an Isaurian mercenary wandered about an aqueduct, he found the most curious thing. Dragging Belisarius to see it, it was a waterway that led straight into the city. Belisarius then ordered it widened, and by the next day, the city was taken. But no, Fiora had by then had been usurped by the new Gothic king, Vitigis, who retreated with his forces north. Indeed, in fear of Belisarius, the Goths had left Rome alone, and with a papal invitation into the eternal they have city, no Belisarius connection there. to it. They didn't After give a shit out. Of yes, barbarian tyranny. Rome was finally back under Roman rule. Well, what was left of it anyway? After the fall of the West, the economic destruction and multiple sackings, Rome. Like, I'm gonna say it wasn't. This happened unbelievably fast. It's two videos after the, the fall of Rome, and it's, immediate, it's already it's back in the itself. empire. Now almost entirely ruins and abandoned houses from a bygone age, populated only by a few tens of thousands of weak, miserable plebs. How Augustus would have wept. Vitigis, though, had gathered his gothic horse and was set on taking Rome once more. Belisarius, however, was set on fire like for every to fight. inch of the Aurelian walls, digging a huge moat around it. And even when the aqueducts were blocked, Belisarius had a mill built between two boats on the Tiber, ensuring grain could still be made into bread and feed everyone. But before okay. the Goths fully sieged Rome, Belisarius took his Bucellari to scout to the Tiber crossing. On their way, they were ambushed by a huge Gothic force, who recognized Belisarius' white-faced horse, and focused on him. Shot, slashed and hit all over, Belisarius slaughtered his way out, killing many Goths at the cost of his armor and being drenched in blood. Being pursued back to Rome, the soldiers at the gates didn't recognize Belisarius with the helmet injuries and blood. Given only seconds to react, Belisarius ordered a counter charge at a far bigger Gothic cavalry. And he did it with such ferocity the soldiers realized that, yeah, that was Belisarius. Finally let in, he commanded the soldiers for right. caution. And as the Goths tried fucking with the Tiber's mill by throwing corpses in the water, Belisarius set up a chain across the river to catch all the breeze. Later the Goths tried pulling up That's still not good for water, walls. but... The animals okay. were killed and the siege towers disabled. Belisarius then began hiring some locals into the army, make them proper Romans again. And with the new reinforcements from Justinian, he started launching several Bucellari raids, scattering the Goths and destroying their camps. Vitigis got so mad he ordered all the senators he had taken hostage in Ravenna to be Oh slaughtered. no, not they senators! They were really so good! about the senators anymore. For yeah. a long time, really. But one day, the plebs he conscripted disobeyed orders and just went to loot the Gothic camp. Getting all attacked, and Belisarius once again had to work his magic to minimize losses. During the siege, Belisarius received orders from Theodora to substitute the current Gothic appointed pope, Silverius, with the one she fought was a Maleficite ally, Vigilius, who was just pretending to get her support. And after Silverius was caught conspiring with uh -oh. senators and Goths, Belisarius exiled the former Good. and elevated the latter. Procopius would put to page further and further lies to smear Belisarius, but he made sure to keep such lies in his book of lies, awaiting for a better chance to demean him in the future. Sick of fighting, Vitigis begged the Romans to surrender, and Belisarius replied, Fuck off! As for Rome, moreover, which we have captured, in holding... I'm not holding yawning because it's boring, I'm yawning stars, because I overslept. But it was you who trespassed upon this city in former times, though it did not belong to you at all. And now you have given it back, however unwillingly, to its ancient possessors. And whoever of you has hopes of setting foot in Rome without a fight is mistaken in his judgment. For as long as Belisarius lives, it is impossible for him to relinquish this city.
Oh, but the siege went on and on. The mills couldn't produce enough bread, the mill sausage became the standard, the plebs began plebbing, but as the Bukelari and Huns kept wrecking the Goths, Vitigis sued for a truce. During it, thousands of more reinforcements were sent by Justinian, led by Vitalian's nephew, John. Proof that not all nephews of great Romans were great Romans themselves. Vitigis then that was broke proved the truce, a long time ago. Course, attacking the Tiber and miserably failing, with Vitigis retreating back through the long repaired Milvian Bridge, getting a farewell gift by having half of his hordes slaughtered before he crossed. Belisarius then gave John 2,000 Bucellari to push north and leave no force behind. John then went northeast, left all force behind, and took a city near Ravenna. Belisarius told him to return, yeah. lest he be encircled by Goths, but John refused, and he was encircled by Goths. It was then that 7,000 more reinforcements arrived from the east, led by Narses. Belisarius planned to just leave the insubordinate John to his fate and advance north given the Gothic numbers, but Narses remembered him of the 2,000 invaluable Bucellari with him. Belisarius insisted on his position, but Narses didn't relent because of a literal technicality. So, again, Belisarius went to work his magic before his army tore apart. As the Goths starved John to death, they were completely surrounded on all sides by a gigantic Roman army, with several campfires seen from the distance and a large navy on the coast. Terrified, the Goths lifted the siege and fled to Ravenna. Belisarius then told his men to end the charade, having used a series of tricks to pretend having a larger army. Being saved from certain oh, death, John expressed Lord. his most sincere gratitude to Narses. As Belisarius liberated more and more of Italy, Mediolanum revolted to his side and begged for a garrison to defend it. Belisarius could spare around 1,000 men, but other cities asked for garrisons as well, so only about 300 actually got there. The Franks, on the okay. other hand, having subjugated the Burgundians and siding with the Goths, gave them 10,000 Burgundians to go help siege Mediolanum. Belisarius then urgently ordered the nearby John to go rush there and save the city, but he refused, saying he only took orders from Narses. Belisarius then wrote to Narses, who agreed with the orders, and when John read them, he caught a mild fever and delayed his march. Meanwhile, Mediolanum's guard had all starved to death, with the survivors saying they would open the gates if only the barbarians spared the city's population. Honorable. But no. Mediolanum was almost completely destroyed, yeah. the entire population either killed, raped, or enslaved, all the wealth stolen and most buildings burned down. The Franks themselves would invade, but North Italy had been so razed and ruined they couldn't sustain their horde, and returned. As the devastation spread north, Belisarius reported it all to Justinian, who got so mad he recalled Narses from Italy, and explicitly wrote back that Belisarius and Belisarius alone was the only authority in Italy. All this while desperate, desperate Vitigis tried one of his last tricks, sending envoys to Kosral, telling him to break the eternal peace now that most of Rome's ah, so it did happen. Okay, good. were in Italy. Having almost completely taken the north, Belisarius then cornered Vitigis in Ravenna, eager to end the war with total victory. But Justinian had caught wind of Vitigis' envoys to Kosral. Ah, eh, not really. He just knew the barbarians would backstab him sooner or later. So as Belisarius was no, about to take no, Ravenna, no. orders came for him to make a compromise treaty with the Goths. As a not-so-subtle Jabba John, he said he would only do it if Justinian himself signed it. Not because of insubordination, but just to buy enough time to show that Ravenna was about to fall. He didn't even have to wait for that, because Vitigis Good. came up with the last of his tricks, proposing uh -huh. Belisarius' peace through reviving the Western Roman Empire with Belisarius as the new Western Roman Emperor, and the Goths as his loyal guardians of Italy, if only he betrayed loyal. Justinian. And yeah, Belisarius told Vitigis he was all for it. The Goths then opened the gates, let Belisarius in, and yeah. arrested Vitigis, freed Amalasuinfa's daughter, Matasuinfa, took yeah. back all the wealth they had stolen from Italy, and proclaimed Ravenna reconquered in the name of Justinian. Vitigis would be sent to Constantinople to die in captivity, Matasuinfa would be set to marry Germanus, and most important of all, after years of fierce campaign, Italy, the home province where it all began, had been freed from barbarian tyranny. In his bliss, Justinian oh, would ask Belisarius for details, a full report of his exploits in Italy. Belisarius would make a proud smile, and in the honor of Stilicho, Aetius, Majorian, and so many more, let him see the casualties.
Read that fast because we're unable to respond. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is three. One in the same. Okay. Nothing wrong, was wrong with my fucking eyes. God damn it. I feel so weird. Good. Rome's revival was at hand. Yesterday, Africa. Today, Italy. Tomorrow, Hispania, Gaul, Britain, Dacia, Justinian couldn't help but dream. Peace had been achieved Probably not gonna last, live long which enough. means war would soon come in the east. Yeah. You see, angry that Rome was recovering its lost provinces, Khosrow began grasping at straws to reinitiate conflict. Demanding part of the Vandal loot cause, I kid you not, the campaign was only possible because of the eternal peace. Justinian sent some scrap, but not enough for the Barbarian. Furthermore, Khosrow had been wanting to consolidate his access to the Black Sea. Would make a Sassanid attack on Constantinople easier. <coughs> but it was only after Justinian began enforcing his new lock code there that he began preparations to break the peace treaty. So, did any of you actually guess wrong? Speaking of enemies of humanity, just so what it was supposed to be easy, to okay. The monophysite heresy. If there are took me time to over how many well, natures whatever. Jesus has, then Justinian hopes fine. Saying, Jesus was divine, human, so and a single person would leave things vague enough for the heretics to relent, but no. Moreover, when the Pope <sighs> visited, he convinced him only the persecution and slaughter of heretics would make Jesus happy. And through persistent hatred, he managed to confine most of the monophysite heresy to Egypt. What he couldn't confine, though, were the Slavs and Bulgars that again raided the Danube, ransacking deep into Thrace. At the very least, a few Christian monks had managed to smuggle a few silkworm eggs from a far eastern barbarian kingdom, setting up a native okay. silk production facility in Constantinople. But in the capital, the only real problem was overpopulation. Too many plebs were breeding and moving there. But it was all an ironic effort. No, it makes sense. That's in how just another works. normal day of ruling, building, and purging, Justinian surroundings. That looks so weird. The, on the only fingers on this side. It looks like it's printed on the paper. Suddenly became darker. Everything became colder and colder. Looking at the sun, its light diminished severely. Its heat was a fraction of what it normally was. This darkness covered the empire for years. Noxious fumes flowed through the air, and the worst side of heretics, like Theodora, emerged, with her incriminating John the Cappadocian of treason. Theodora began being a bitch about a great many things, really, but Justinian cared not. That bitchiness is why he married her. No, he just exiled John to end the matter and concentrate on the apocalyptic omen at hand. The diminished solar activity crippled farming efforts, and famine ensued. But by so then, Justinian was still too busy sending reinforcements to Belisarius in Italy and civilizing savages. And it had been right there, Khosrow publicly broke the peace and invaded the empire. But Dara stood strong in his path. Unable to take Dara, Khosrow faked some diplomatic talk with a local city. It's not bishop. Pompeii, is it? Return home, and just smoke from the, the volcano. Took it. They're too far apart. Belisarius still trying to get a high score and in Italy, and Citus is having a long time ago. insurrection, getting killed for it by an insurrectionist named Artabanes. Justinian oh, sent Germanus to protect Antioch, but its walls were still a wreck, having no choice but to retreat. Khosrow thus led his hordes to take and utterly ruin Antioch, slaughtering tens of thousands, further destroying the city as much as he could, bathing the blood of murdered innocents in the Mediterranean, and once he finally left, he reigned terror in other cities, forcing chariot games to be rigged so that the Greens, his favorites, would win. 
with no army nearby, okay. Justinian agreed with bribing the savage for peace, which he agreed to, and then immediately broke it by extorting cities on his way out and attacking Dara yeah, trying to been destroy its minutes. walls, only then leaving. With him, he dragged 30,000 Antiochian citizens, making them slaves and forcing them to live in a hellish version of their ruined city, given an ironic name for its ironic torture. Justinian had had enough. If the barbarian Sassanids so wanted war, he promised they would get a war that they would never forget. Told In two episodes, the Lissaris calm down. had no time for another triumph and prepared to crush Khosrau for good. And although his officers would act up again, Belisarius focused on pushing the barbarians away. And when treating with them, he took most of his army carrying just hunting equipment to make it seem like a small hunting party from a gigantic army further west. And like the Goths, the Sassanids fell for it. After this turn of tables, Artabas and his That's forces good. would defect good to the tactic. Roman side and were allowed to. In these dark years, Projecta had been married to the now governor of Africa. Then he was killed by a Vandal survivor, who All sought right. to rebuild the Vandal kingdom and take the emperor's niece for himself. Then Artabanes murdered him to prove loyalty to said emperor, and also to have said emperor's niece for himself. But when he took her to Constantinople to marry, okay. Theodora had already returned to her senses, and noting that he was, you know, already married, she forbid him from marrying her niece, infuriating him. As for Justinian, he was far too stressed out to care. While in the frontier, okay. Belisarius was getting the legions available and ready. Battle formations I think he was happy he had a niece. Where did he not to protect him? nothing to happen. The border was dead silent. The Sassanids never attacked. The only thing to come from the east being tales of horror and death. Oh. Meanwhile, in Egypt, a sailor was working on a ship delivering wheat to all across the empire. But one day, he started feeling strange pains in his head, in his arms and legs. He couldn't oh. sleep well. He was filled with the most terrible nightmares. His eyes went bloodshot. Is that what the, the red was there? The sailor started reporting similar pains, ever more painful as the sun darkened ever more. A Is little it... later, a ship was noticed crashing into port. And the no, it's so early for the Black Death, the right? Horror, they found the entire ship's crew rotting in pools of blood. Trying to at least Maybe understand not? what happened, they found strange dark spots all over the corpses. Bubonis, the mark of the Black Bu Death. Bubon yeah, the bubonic okay, bubonic plague, plague soon took over all of Egypt and was unknowingly carried off in several more it's... green ships to all corners of the empire. What is Slater? City by city, people began to fall ill, vomit blood, rot from the inside, and die. What no is like 13th or 13th century? This was the work of pure evil. In Constantinople, of the 500,000 citizens therein, over 200,000 would be killed. All yeah. surviving citizens stayed on lockdown, leaving only to bury their friends and family. Mass graves were ordered dig, and no matter how much Justinian tried to provide... It only reminds me of people who scream, Oh, the Black Plague went, went away without masks and vaccines. It did, didn't it? relief. The devastation to the economy, armies and peoples of the empire was far too great to mitigate. The plague spared none, especially not unreplaceable great minds like Tribonians, another of its victims. Indeed, even Justinian himself was eventually oh, infected. Shit. The Bubonis consuming his body, the so the fever rising up, final the final of Sassanid war season. will not be with him. At the height of their terror, the infected began seeing demonic apparitions in the future. The horsemen of the apocalypse, headless demons, and hellish ghosts posing as angels dissuading oh, them no, from to faith in exchange for their lives. The deaths in the millions, the economic destruction and deep trauma far surpassed that of any short-term crisis or barbarian threat ever endured. In all, a full third of the empire's population was killed. And the truth is, he would never recover. But that happened said, to all he would Europe. Not be allowed to recover. And when the ultimate vulture came for the empire, its weakest, the he Gauls resurrected the Ostrogoths from the depths of hell, unleashing them once again over Italy. The very the second know. Italy was in peril, Justinian woke up, healed from the plague, and calling on Belisarius oh. again, sending him to Italy again, suffering the presence of John again, who disobeyed orders and went for easy victories again. 
rallying behind some undead goth named Totilla, the goths laid siege to the Eternal City, whose garrison, what a plague spared anyway, were barbarian mercenaries. Speaking barbarian to barbarian, Totilla convinced Anisarion to turn traitor and open the gates for him. Once inside, Totilla sent a letter to the Emperor warning that if the Romans didn't leave Italy, then he would destroy Rome for good. He received a quick reply, daring him to even try. Terrified, Totila just marched south to attack the idiot general that was all by himself, opening way for Belisarius to re retake Rome from him. But back in the east, Shut so up. many years of heresy, sunless days, and cancerous oh, behavior no. had taken Again? a toll on Theodora. So much so, she contracted cancer and died. Oh. Justinian deeply mourned her death. She was often a pain of a heretic wife, and she was again. his pain of a heretic wife. Uncoincidentally, Belisarius was recalled back to Constantinople shortly afterwards, and having again saved Rome, the aging general chose to enter a well-deserved retirement. Saying goodbye to such a competent general hurt, but some consolation laid with his cousin, Germanus, plus his two sons, Justin oh, and shit. Justinian the Younger, who he had before married Matasypha, who was only now pregnant. Their loyalty was proved when Artabanes, still bitter, plotted to murder Justinian and the retired Belisarius, usurping the empire in the name of Germanus, who he never informed about such plot. Justin ended up finding out, telling his father, who then told the excubitors who then arrested Artabanes, forcing him to go fight against the undead Goths. Having oh, okay. no sons of his own, Justinian sent his cousin and apparent heir, Germanus, to finish the reconquest of Italy. Then he died of a random illness, not even bubonic plague, leaving a pregnant widow behind and a decrepit Liberius to replace him in Italy. Liberius did defend Sicily, but that wasn't enough, so Justinian sent Narses to take over, and given how the plague gutted the legions, he gave him the funds necessary to hire a whole bunch of barbarian mercenaries. Oh. Among the tons of barbarians he hired was a new Germanic horde settling nearby Italy, the Lombards. John did what he did okay. best, winning an easy victory, and Narses regrouped with Belisarius' veterans to amass some 30,000 men in total. And with all of those legions and mercenaries, he the crushed the undead army. Gothic legions, killing Totila. Hey. The main battle won, Narcissus paid and told the Lombards to leave. The longer they stayed in Italy, the more troublesome they got. The Goths had taken Rome again, but Narcissus re, -re retook it. And when the last remnants of their hordes gathered near what was once Pompeii, Narcissus outnumbered them to death. And yep. with that, the uh, ending yeah. of Belisarius had already ended. Just in time so for what the happened with the sun then? Nothing? In their infinite barbarian wisdom, the Franks decided to split their horde. One marched east and was crushed by Narcissus' legions, and the other marched west, where they caught the bubonic plague and deteriorated away. The okay. Ostrogoths were once again dead, but the Visigoths were still kicking around. Kicking meaning raping, and around meaning Hispania. Barbarians being barbarians, they were once again slaughtering each other to be king of the mud huts, with one of the would-be mud hut majesty asking the nearby Romans for help. Being told no. of this chance, even after decades of rule, war and plague, the death of his loved ones and deterioration of his mind and body, Justinian still believed in the dream that once was Rome, and so ordered Liberius to reconquer as much of Hispania as possible. So as the Visigoths kept killing each other, Liberius led an nostalgic oh, reconquest of the birthplaces of Trajan and Hadrian to beyond what was once New Carthage. The victorious Mudhut Majesty tried fighting back, but failed, for now. And this was it. The Eastern Roman Empire stood at its greatest extent. Africa, okay. Italy, and even some of Hispania reconquered. But due to the plague, wars and disasters, the empire's population was now lower than it had been decades before the reconquests. It's really all down. I don't think recapturing anything was a good idea for the Black Plague. Would yet be made to restore what Rome once was. Yeah, that's where the red was there. I was as correct. Close as Justinians. As for Justinian's later years, they would be the same as for all of those who rule Rome for decades. Disappointing. For all of his great reforms, he could never make the Senate worthwhile. At least now he was led by a capable patrician, Paul, keeping one of the last patrician clans of old Roman origins still alive. A very Romanic like name. came and left again and again, but every time it killed only the non-immune, little children and babies. 
never remarrying and thus remaining childless, Justinian's two likeliest heirs, the two Justins, vowed that whoever of them became the emperor, the other would be made his right hand man. Now, here's a tough question. Taking over their father's legacy. God damn it, I thought you said like, now, is this read it? Who's going to succeed the great emperor? He's skilled and loved general, he's an incompetent family relative, a horrible usurper that ruins everything, a god to your random that saves the empire. Ooh. I think A and D is too good. We we had we just now had a great emperor. Two great emperors in a row is too much to ask, I think. I would love to be wrong. But that's what I think. Incompetent family relative. That's right there. And a horrible usurper that ruins everything. Uh, B. B. It's a tough question. Taking over their father's legacy, Justin and Justinian the Younger joined the legions and helped fend off any Sassanid attacks his hordes destroyed by his own lord's plague and now facing capable Romans again, Khosrau begrudgingly agreed to a peace, for now. Just as soon as there was peace in the empire as the Bulgars were invading the Balkans again. With no active generals nearby, Justinian turned to Belisarius for help, who dutifully left retirement and gathered oh. some 300 retired veterans, plus some civilians fleeing south to fight the barbarians. Camping nearby a passage Belisarius knew the Bulgars would cross, he, and say it with me, lit several fires to make it seem like he had a gigantic army camping nearby, scaring the Bulgars right. into only sending a few thousand barbarians to cross, who he stopped with 100 veterans, while the other 200 veterans flanked them from the woods, making them flee to the north. And yeah, the barbarians just kept falling for this, hardly surprising though. Justin would take well, over never there and face yet another shown. barbarian nomad horde migrating west. Of course they were falling for it because they never knew the truth that they didn't have enough armies to actually deal with them all. So they actually just fought... yeah? That checks out. The Afars. Fleeing from the east, they demanded lands in the empire. Shockingly, Justinian refused, but before the Avars invaded, Justin had repaired the damage the Bulgars had dealt to the local defenses. So they just, you know, chilled beyond the Danube. For now. But then one day, okay. Belisarius was forcefully dragged into a court and accused of most heinous treason against the emperor, the case being overseen by a certain Procopius, who immediately judged yeah. him guilty and condemned him to imprisonment. What the you know fuck? Why. Thrown into a dark cell to rot away, he's not he was in any kind of threat anymore. He's pretty much retired, he only got from... came back from retirement just to deal with the with Bulgars, and that's it. He's not a fucking threat. By none other than Justinian himself, who instantly pardoned him of all made-up charges. But his freedom didn't did. last long, as Belisarius oh. would soon after die in his home estate, and with him, the last of Justinian's will to keep on living. Despite well, growing he wasn't less attached to this mortal world, Justinian would make one final Hopefully. attempt to end the Monophysite heresy. And what he didn't achieve in his prime, he didn't achieve in his old age. In retrospect, yeah. Justinian's life had been one of constantly fighting against the odds. When his enlightened reforms drew the wrath of the old system, he reined them into submission. When all believed the West had fallen for good, he had Belisarius prove them wrong. As heretics continually tried to further divide the church, he acted as the foremost defender of the faith's unity. When the plague came to usher in the apocalypse, he survived it and kept the empire intact. That's impressive. Barbarian That's very impressive. After barbarian would attack from every direction, but the generals he appointed sought to beat them all back. All this conflict, all this death and suffering, but Justinian never regretted it, for he knew that there once was a dream, a dream worth fighting for. After so many decades, at a night of his 83rd year, Justinian became weaker and weaker, with only a local palace bureaucrat to notice. What the great emperor's last thoughts were, no one knows. Was it pride in his loss that would stand for millennia? Was it disdain for the plague that killed so many and hindered his reconquests? Was it about his heirs, or his enemies and the heretics? Or perhaps it was joy over those he would get to soon see. In the end, 
none would know. After four decades of great rule, Justinian was dead. The tragedy of the fall of Rome looms large in the common psyche, prompting many to have asked through the centuries. What if there just had been the right reforms? What if they had given their all to reconquer the lost provinces? What if they had fought against the tides of history? Justinian, Belisarius, and so many heroes of this age. It just... It's easy to think what if, what if, what if, what if, like throughout history, throughout your own life. But the main thing is that there, it already happened. It doesn't matter what if. It didn't happen. You can't. There's no point thinking like that. You can't think like that just for fun, I guess. Just theories and stuff like that to throw around, what if, what if, what if, but nothing gonna change. It already happened, and it happened the way it happened. War, that what if. Decades they spent fighting to restore... That's especially bad thinking. Was. And thinking about history, I don't know, Brexit, I don't miss it. Think about history, like, what if they did that? What if they did that? Sure. Just when you think that way about your own life, what if I did that? That's a, that's much, much, much worse to your psyche, I think. What if decades nobody else fighting to restore what once was? I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. far more than most ever dared dream of. Yeah, how long was he in men, power? No matter how great, eventually die. For as long as there are those who remember the dream that was Rome. The reign of him Where are those who remember the most shall never be forgotten. Taste. The reign of Justinian the Great. Okay. I expected more because it was like two minutes. Oh, less than, less than a minute and a half, actually. Don't log on me. Uh, nothing? No comment, no nothing. Okay. Next time it's Madness and Devils. And I can see two emperors on the thing. So, we will see if I was right. I guess I didn't get answer here. Hopefully I will remember it for the next time. Which was the... That he will be succeeded by... I know the answer, I didn't forget it. I can <laughs> phrase it in English. Uh, relative. His relative, incompetent relative, will succeed him. Anyway, this was good. Well, the plague. I thought the Black Plague was much later. Why? Why did I think that? Was I wrong because I thought that? Or is it... No, it's like one third of the Empire, so it's, it's the stats that Black Plague does. Time period. Uh, it is thirteen hundred. Have we that far in the thing? I thought it's like five hundred or something. Huh? Mm. Oh wait, am I an idiot? An idiot. Oh, no, 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 it's a different thing, it was comparison 700 years to today, not 700 years from a different thing. <laughs> I 
we are that far we're in the, in the what is it going to be 14th century in 1300s is that where we are really okay fair enough anyway just a weird jump because we kind of were struggling like in the end where the fall of rome happened it was 400 something right maybe 500 if i'm a bit off uh and now it's 30. okay just a weird jump is what a weird job weirds me out i can't say a different word than word than weird so i'll end this here thank you anybody who watched this i appreciate it a lot and i hope to see you next time goodbye have a great life because one of us has to